Let's take a look at the 2D kinematics worksheet. The first question has to do with firing a cannonball from ground level. We shoot that cannonball from ground level with initial speed 150 meters per second and we launch it at an angle of 35 degrees above the ground. So let's let the positive y-axis point upward and the uh, positive x-axis point to the right. Remember that gravity points down, that's the negative y direction, and it has a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared. So question A will draw a sketch of the problem showing the cannon, the ground, the x and y axes, and the trajectory of the cannonball. I already drew the axes and labeled them, so the, uh, the cannon we can place at the origin and I'll just, I won't try to draw the cannon. I'm not a very good artist. I'll just draw the cannonball. Here it is at the origin and it's getting launched. Uh, let me draw that a little better. It's getting launched at a 35 degree angle, which is more like that. And I will indicate the angle there. Angle theta is 35 degrees. And it has an initial speed, V initial, of 150 meters per second. Okay, so there's our sketch. And after we launch that cannonball, it's going to do a trajectory that looks something like that. So there's question A. Now let's go to question B. I apologize for my poor handwriting with this electronic pen. Question B, calculate the X and Y components of the cannonball's initial velocity, V, X initial, and V, Y initial. So velocity is a vector. And we can resolve that vector into X components and Y components. So here's our initial velocity vector. I'll draw a little vector sign on top. And we can find the components that line up with the y and x axes. So here's the y component. And here's the x component. Sorry for the bad drawing. So v, y initial and v, x initial are the components. And now this drawing looks like a right triangle. Here's our angle. And if you think about your right triangle trigonometry, the side of the triangle that is adjacent to the angle is along the x-axis. And the side of the triangle that is opposite to that angle is parallel to the y-axis. So adjacent gets cosine, opposite gets sine. So the x component is going to be v initial, cosine, theta. v y initial will be v initial, sine, theta. And we can put in these numbers. v initial is 150 meters per second. Theta was 35 degrees. And that equals 122.9 meters per second. Whoops. And for the y component, that will be 150 meters per second. Oops. times sine of 35. This pen is hard to work with. OK, that equals 86.04 meters per second. Now you might notice that uh, in the problem, we are given like two significant figures. 35 degrees has two. 150 meters per second has maybe two or maybe three significant figures. And when I wrote these answers here, I 
had four significant figures. Uh, that's just because I'm trying to keep some extra digits for my intermediate calculations. When I get to uh, um, kind of final calculations like part C or part F, I can round it to two sig figs. Okay, let's look at question C. Uh, using kinematics, kinematic equations, calculate the time required for the cannonball to reach its maximum height. Okay, so I'm going to follow my step-by-step -step procedure that I talk about in one of my other lesson videos. And in that procedure, you start out by drawing a sketch, which we've already done, and then you identify the quantities that you are given. And the quantities we know so far, um, we know Vx initial, Vy initial, we know the acceleration, and question C is, it's asking about the maximum height. So this is really a situation where we're only concerned with the y direction up and down. So even though I, I do know some things about the x direction, they're gonna be irrelevant to this uh, question. We can just look at the y direction. So I'm just gonna write down my, my given quantities relating to the y direction. So I know that y initial is zero because the cannonball starts at the ground. I know Vy initial is 86.04 meters per second. I know the acceleration in the y direction is 9.8 meters per second squared pointing downward, which is negative in the coordinate system we just drew. And one more key fact, I know that V, Y, final is zero. I want to point out a couple things about this. Notice I said final. And uh, what I mean is that if you just look at question C and you think about the initial state of the system and the final state of the system, relating to question C, the initial state would be the cannonball gets launched and the final state in question C would be the cannonball is at its maximum height. So you have to be a little careful about initial and final. You have to know what they're referring to because later on in this problem, the cannonball is gonna hit the ground and when we do calculations in those scenarios, will probably be saying that final is when the cannonball hits the ground. But for now in question C, when I say final, I mean when it reaches the point that we're concerned with, which is the maximum height. Okay, the other point that I wanted to mention is that uh, when uh, an object is, is thrown into the air, uh, when it reaches its maximum height, its vertical component of velocity is zero. It's not moving up, not moving down at that brief instant in time. It is momentarily, uh, it momentarily has zero velocity vertically. It still has horizontal velocity. In fact, during this entire motion, the horizontal velocity, the X component, stays the same. That's because there's no x acceleration. There's no change in the horizontal velocity. But the vertical velocity is changing. It's launched. It has a positive velocity. It's going up. It's going up. The whole time, gravity is slowing it down until it reaches its maximum height. Momentarily, it has zero vertical velocity there. And after it reaches its maximum height, gravity continues pulling it down. So it starts moving down, and it has a downward vertical velocity. All right, so those are our given quantities, and of course what we're looking for is the time.
that it takes to reach that height. That is the quantity we're trying to find. That's what the question's asking for. So now you look at your list of kinematic equations, those four kinematic equations I gave you, and you select which one or which ones you think are going to be useful. And sometimes there's more than one equation that'll do the job. Other times there's just one. Uh, in this case, uh, what could we do? In this case, uh, I think we want to use VF or VYF equals VY initial plus AYT. The reason why we choose that equation is because it contains all of the stuff in our list of givens and th the variable that we want to find. So there's only one unknown in this equation, and we will be able to solve for our unknown t by doing some algebra. So let's solve this equation for t. Do some algebra. Vy f minus Vy, oops. I equals a y t. So t equals Vy f minus Vy i over a y. And it's always a good habit to do all of your algebra in symbols before you put in any numbers. Please get in the habit of doing this. It makes it much easier for me to follow your work when I'm grading your exams. And that means I'm more likely to give you partial credit for the problem. So after we've done that algebra, we can plug in numbers. Vyf was 0. Vyi was 86.04 meters per second. Oh, it's hard to draw a straight line with this pen. And Ay is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And that equals 8.779 seconds. And once again, I kept some extra digits so we can have some more digits to work with uh, along the way in our intermediate calculations so we don't get rounding errors. OK, there we go. Part D, find the maximum height. So I'll use my same procedure. Draw a sketch. We did that. Write down our known quantities. All right. What do we know, or what are we given? Uh, I, again, we know y initial equals 0. We know v y initial is 86.04. We know Vy final is 0. We also know T now. And A is always the same if you're close to the surface of the Earth. It's always going to be this number, 9.8 meters per second squared downward. And again, part D refers to the same initial and final scenario that part C did, where the initial is when the cannonball leaves the ground, and final is when the cannonball is at its maximum height. So my labels, initial and final, mean the same things as they did in part C. This time, I'm trying to find y final 
the height that the cannonball has at its peak. And I need to choose the right equation to figure that out. Turns out this time there are many options. And it doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, you can use uh, kinematic equation number two. You could use kinematic equation number three. Or you could use kinematic equation number four. And I'm just going to leave it up to you to choose whichever one you like. Um, if you use kinematic equation number four, you have to do some algebra to solve for y final. So that one is the most inconvenient for this problem. If you use equation number two or number three, they're already set up. So you can just plug in and get y final. So you probably want to use one of those two. Um, so whichever one you use, you're going to get um, y final equals 377.7 meters. And now if you, if you feel like being good about significant figures, you can write that as 3.8 times 10 to the two meters. So 380 meters high. Let's, let's check out part E now. Calculate how long it takes the cannonball to hit the ground. All right, now part E. We have a different final scenario. So part E, we can consider initial to be the launch, and now we're going all the way to the point where the cannonball hits the ground. So I'm still going to use I and F as my subscripts, but you have to keep in mind that we're now referring to a different final scenario. All right. So our given quantities now. Uh, are that y initial is 0, and y final is also 0. The cannonball starts at ground level. It goes up. And then it ends at ground level. So both of these are 0. And we know v y initial 86.04 meters per second. We know the acceleration of gravity points down and has magnitude 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're trying to find the time. Now, I use the same symbol t in part e as I did in part d, but it's now referring to a different situation. So I, I don't have a subscript. I didn't label it tf or whatever. I just label it t, but keep in mind that now it's a different time than we had in, uh, in Part D.
So we got to find the right kinematic equation to use, and there's only one that's going to do the job this time. It's kinematic equation number three. Now this equation is a quadratic equation for t because we're trying to find t and t is squared here. Um, but for this particular scenario, you don't have to use the quadratic formula. Uh, in this, in problem two on this worksheet, you will have to use the quadratic formula, but I'll show you the shortcut way to do it um, for this case where the ball lands at the same height that it was launched from. So here's how we solve it. Since those two values are uh, equal to each other, they're zero, um, I'm just going to put them in and then leave the rest as symbols. And do a little bit of algebra here, so see if you can follow along. Practice your algebra skills with me. I'm going to take one factor of t out of here. Like that. And it's a quadratic equation, so, so there's two solutions. One solution is t equals 0. That uh, that makes sense because the the cannonball is at ground level at time equals zero when it's launched. That's not the interesting answer though. The interesting answer is when this whole thing equals zero. So we'll solve for zero equals v y initial plus one half a y t. And a little algebra tells you that t equals uh, minus 2vy initial over ay. And when you plug in the numbers, it gives you 17.56 seconds. Now check this out. 17.56 is 2 times 8.779. Oops. That's not meters per second. That's just seconds. Okay. Uh, that kind of makes sense. This motion is symmetrical. When you launch the cannonball, the time it takes to reach the maximum is half the time it takes to complete the entire journey. So maybe you could have guessed that just by intuition, uh, but we just showed it mathematically. Kind of cool. All right, part F. How far does that cannonball go? So part F, initial and final, have the same meaning that they did in part E. Initial is the launch, and final is the landing. So we can write down our, our given quantities. Uh, this time, we are concerned with horizontal motion. So the first time we've... Uh, we've really worried about it in this problem because we want to know how far does a cannonball go in the x direction. So I don't need to use my y direction information. I'll just use my x direction information. I know x initial is 0 because it was launched from the origin. I know vx initial is uh, 122.9 meters per second. There is no acceleration along x. This is 
um, this is like textbook projectile motion. In, in reality, there is some acceleration in the X direction uh, because in reality, wind resistance, air resistance exists. And when you launch a projectile, air resistance will slow it down. So there will be a, some amount of negative X acceleration in real life, but that makes it much more difficult mathematically to analyze. You got to do some calculus. So we're doing the idealized version of this problem, the physics six, no calculus version. So we assume, or we pretend like air resistance doesn't exist and we say there's no acceleration in the X direction. That cannonball just cuts through the air easily. And that can be a reasonable approximation as long as the cannonball is very dense and, um, and the speed is not too crazy fast. So our, our answer will be a, a reasonable approximation to a, a real life scenario as long as you have a sufficiently heavy and dense cannonball. Okay. Um, cool. Oh, we also know the time. All right. It took 17.56 seconds to do this. So we can um, find x final. How far did it go? So I'll use I'll use our third kinematic equation Whoa. for x. x final equals x initial plus vx initial t plus one half ax t squared. But we just said that acceleration is zero, so we don't need that last term. And x initial is zero too, so that goes away. So this equation is actually super simple. It's just x final equals vx initial t, or distance equals speed times time. So x final is going to be vx initial, 122.9 meters per second, times 17.56 seconds. And the cannonball travels 2,158 meters. And let's do it with two significant figures. 2,200 meters or more clearly written 2.2 times 10 to the th uh, 10 to the third meters. So the cannibal travels a little over two kilometers. All right, and that's problem one from the worksheet. I'll do problem two in a different video.